1966, we described a new disease resembling gross hormone deficiency, as you can see in the left slide. So this disease is characterized by dwarfism, obesity, and a small face. Now, it, well, we had a, this was in 60, we did describe, but we saw the first patients in 58, when a radio assay for growth hormone was not available. It became available only in 1963. And then we were very surprised that these patients showed high values of serum growth hormone, uh, similar to acromegalic patients. So we, it took us 20 years to study what was wrong with it. Because, so the first thing we had in mind was the growth hormone molecule was uh, abnormal. By monological studies, we found that the molecule is normal. Then it came again, we had to wait until the growth hormone receptor was closed. And then we prepared uh, receptors from two patients who made us, who gave us the permission to do a biopsy of their liver. And we found, as you can see in the right slide, that the growth hormone did not bind to the liver. In order to check whether the material that we are using is biologically active, uh, we used also insulin. And you can see that these patients bound insulin in contradistinction to the uh, growth hormone receptor. So we knew already that this we have to deal with a growth hormone resistance syndrome. Now, uh, we have a large cohort. Uh, nowadays, we have it in 75 patients. More or less, it is distributed between the same distribution between male and females. And uh, the age of the patients we are having now are less children and many adults who could not be treated because IGF-1, which is the only treatment, became available only in 1989. Therefore, uh, we looked also for patients in other countries, and we found that our patients were the majority of Jewish oriental origin, some were Muslims and also Christian Arabs. They, uh, as you can see, that most of these patients came from consanguineous families. So we concluded that this is a recessive disease, inherited disease, and both parents have to be a barrier of the gene showing a, a, a mutation or deletion in the uh, growth hormone receptor. There are now almost a hundred mutations in of the growth hormone receptor reported from many parts of the world. So we had here a background is linked to their we know that IGF-1 have been identified as risk factors for many malignancies. Now these patients have a lot of growth hormone but do not have IGF-1, as was shown, when we give additional growth hormone injection, IGF-1 does not rise. Therefore, we had concluded that our studies show that these patients have congenital IGF-1 deficiency and growth hormone, which cannot act on the stimulation of IGF-1 in the liver. We are not completely certain whether growth hormone does not have any direct action on a series of tissues. Now, to confirm, 
we've had a very interesting observation, namely that these patients, the adults, we had now quite a group of adults, uh, did not have cancer, whereas their families showed, and I will demonstrate to you the study we performed, on four types of diagnosis, all of which are characterized by congenital IGF-1 deficiency. One is a disease we described and which was called Laron syndrome. We have congenital isolated gross hormone deficiency in which the gene for gross hormone is mutated or deleted. There are gross hormone releasing hormone receptors, as has been shown in patients, in a large group of patients in the northern part of Brazil, and since then have also been reported from other parts of the world. There is also, as you may know, congenital multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, all of whom also include not only the lack of the other pituitary hormones, but also gross hormone deficiency. But to say that multiple pituitary hormone deficiency may not be equal the congenital form may not be equal for all the hormones involved. And this is important for the studies which we perform. Now, we were able to collect data on a total of 542 patients and 752 of their first degree family members. We have been able since then, this was performed in 2013, we have been able to collect more patients and the results are equally the same. Now, our observation, we made the first observation that these patients do not show cancer despite at the beginning, we showed high values of growth hormone, and we know that IGF-1 is related to cancer, and it is high in acromegaly, and also stimulates cancers in other tissue. So we were interested to look into, really, into see what happens in these patients who have isolated or multiple Ig hormone, gross hormone deficiency or inherent IGF-1 deficiency like due to gross hormone receptor defect as we described. The first observation we reported in Italy at a cancer, concert, uh, cancer meeting in Taormina, Sicily. And we reported very shortly that the prevalence of malignancy in patients with congenital absence of IGF-1 was, was really uh, statistically significant, the absence. We subsequently published two additional reports. One, entitled Patients with Congenital Deficiency of IGF-1 seem protected from the development of malignancy. This was a preliminary study in 2007. And then the large study, which I told you before, on congenital IGF deficiency tends to confer protection against postnatal development of malignancy. Now, uh, we, were, we were more and more certain that our observations are correct. As Dr. Guevara from Ecuador 
where there is a group of 100 patients with Laroche syndrome also did not find cancer in their patients, meaning that we reported 230 from collection and another 100 would mean 200, 330 patients had zero malignancy. In Ecuador, in, sorry, in Ecuador, they found one patient who developed subsequently cancer. And as I will explain you for this, the explanation is clear. Now, the patient's age in which who had not developed cancer was up to the age of 75. The 160 patients with congenital isolated growth hormone deficiency showed one cancer or basal cell carcinoma on the skin. And this can be explained that maybe there was not a complete deficiency of the uh, growth hormone. Now, the GHRH defect as is a large group in northern Brazil, showed one patient with Hodgkin and two again, skin disease. The congenital MPHD, we collected 130 patients, and you can see that the age goes up, had two thyroid cancer and one planocellular carcinoma of the nasal septum. I will tell you, explain, I will, the explanation, the difference between the zero and also the congenital IGF deficiencies of these diagnoses differ. Now here we see the prevalence of malignancy in the first degree relatives. The first degree relatives are heterozygous for the gross hormone receptor defect, whereas the patients are homozygous for the gross hormone receptor defect. The one patient in Ecuador who developed the disease, the cancer, was a double heterozygous. And as I will show you here, the first degree family members who are heterozygous are not protected. And we see here that we have 218 first degree family members. And they had 18 malignancies in 15 individuals. First degree family members of congenital IGHD deficiency showed again seven malignancies in six individuals, showing that some have multiple. The GHL receptor defect, when we studied, showed at that time no malignancies. In the meantime, we have a personal report of three members who have developed. Congenital multiple pituitary hormone deficiency and had, again, the first degree members showed cancer. Now, our question was, why did some patients, if we go back, if we go back and find here the thyroid congenital multipituri, multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, showed some cancer. These patients underwent gross hormone stimulation test and they secreted small amount of gross hormone. Probably this defect was also true in these patients. Thus, we further analyze the data and we have here the first degree family members, siblings only, only the siblings, not the parents or other relatives. We see again, LS, no malignancy. 
and here in the sibling, the heterozygous sibling had 8% or 5.8%. In isolated grossable deficiency, again, the hetero siblings have show percent malignant. In GHRH receptor defects, at that time of the analysis, nothing was reported. In the congenital malpitoria hormone deficiency, there is a small number. So what we can conclude so far that only the homozygous patient for a gross hormone receptor defect will be uh, protected from cancer. Heterozygous patients are heterozygous family members are not, and this is certainly important. So when we say now the prevalence of malignancy in further relative of all time, further relative, not the first degree, we can see that also these patients have quite a bit of malignancy, and the congenital IJD again have malignancy, and the GHRH receptor defect have here, and here we could not get all the results because they are not corrected always with the family of the patient. So out of 172nd degree relative and 14 further degree relative, 31 confirmed malignant in 30 individuals. Now, what were the cancers reported in the relatives of the family? It was lung cancer, breast cancer, gastric cancer, prostate, colon, leukemia, primary unknown, pancreas, uterus, bone, lymphoma, nose, renal, thyroid, subcutaneous, skin uh, cancer, and skin cancer, cancer carcinoma, brain, liver, esophagus, bladder. Then first we see here that IGF-1, the fish congenital total, homozygous, IGF-1 deficiency, protects cancer of all these kinds, whereas the heterozygous relative of these patients can develop any kind of cancer. Now, these studies certainly, uh, I would say, are show definitely the important role of growth hormone as well as cats as IGF-1 in the promotion of cancer. We are not certain that IGF-1 is the primary cause, but it is certainly promoting once a cancer, primary cancer is established. Now we can conclude that there is also very interesting that these patients are human beings. Now our findings were also uh, supported by experimental studies performed by Professor Kopchik's group in uh, Ohio, in which he produced a mouse in which they knocked out the grossable receptor, and they call this the neuron mouse. This mouse has the same characteristics as the patients with LS, and they have a greater longevity in the females, and they also, when you implant tensor into the subcutaneous tissue in these mice, they are protected from growing this cancer furthermore. Thus, they too are protected. So, we would like to conclude again that the finding that first and second degree relatives 
proven or unproven heterozygous for the above, who secrete growth hormone at IGF-1 are not, not IGF-1 are, oh, sorry, at IGF-1 are not protected by to the a development of cancer. The, we now can conclude that this, I already told you the fact that few patients have shown that minute amounts of receptors suffice to abolish the protection. Now, here is the experimental studies of the knockout in which they exhibit a significant reduction in the overall incidence of malignancy, but they are also transplanted cancer uh, under the skin, they seem protected to develop this cancer. Now, our findings uh, were announced in the world as uh, the Laron dwarfs could help the key to cure cancer. This was written in all the new, many of the newspapers, but uh, for the moment, we are looking for the answer but have not yet found a cure, how to cure these patients uh, who have developed cancer of the many kinds I have shown you. Now, we therefore to advance our knowledge in collaboration with Professor Werner at the Molecular Genetics Department at the Sacred School of Medicine and Dr. Lina Lapkina, we try to elucidate what makes this protection. And we have performed a series of genetic studies. And the possible mechanism of protection from cancer by congenital IGF-1 deficiency can either be lack of tumor stimulating gene or unmasking one or more tumor suppressor gene or protect against DNA damage? For the moment, we can answer the first two questions. And the gene, uh, gene chip analysis of the serum of the shows that they have a different type of genes. This gene is here. The red one, you see the difference, and you see here that the LS patients have a minority of other genes. Now, our studies went on further, and we studied a series of known genes. And you see here the controls are marked in blue, and the Laron type the Lord syndrome patients in red. And we can see the differential amounts of the genes in different in both type of substance. You see, for instance, that the UGTP is more in LS, versicon, cycling, serpin, or RSH and AKT3 are more in the controls, meaning that these patients who are known to promote cancer are increased in the control patients and reduced in the Laron syndrome patients. Now, we also identified various uh, molecules associated with protection of LS cancer on uh, gels. And we can see here, for instance, the difference of 10 uh, tumor suppressor cells, which is increased in LS on the left side. Here you see it, and it's absent in the controls. And we see that tubulin has no difference, but serpin is more increased in the relatives and absent 
in the patient. The same is due here. We can see the same is different form. But let me summarize now of the genetic studies of the various genes that we have found furthermore is the following, that the LS patients with IGF-1 gene absence have an increase, increase of suppressor cell. The oncogenic, they have a decrease in oncogene. Now, the relatives, first of all, relatives of these patients have a reduction in suppressor genes, which explains that they can have cancer and they have an increased amount of oncogene. Therefore, we can now deal with many genes, with many genes. However, we still don't have the answer for a master gene, which could involve the cure, the development of drugs or transplantation of a gene, knock in a gene which is suppressor for all types of cancer. But we hope that in the future we may have further advances in this research. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.